according to the local computer as well. And I think maybe she's able to record it there to some degree, but we've got sound. There's our dual microphone receiver yes. up there. Not the best quality, but it works okay. Running the video and recording. Yeah, so their P5 does that again. You can see here, they can see you. You can pick up your devices and show them. Get that down a little bit. Yeah, so that's the thing on the sea. So that's this old table in there. Of course, that's here. Yeah. E1, UN, D5. That's your That'll work well enough for me. Of course, if you want to share a screen, there we go. Keep it P1 for now so they can see you going in. Then the PowerPoint. And if you want to share a screen, click on share a screen. Click on your PowerPoint. Share that there. See yourself sitting up there. Uh, the problem is, right now, we've only got now people who sometimes bring in the chat, right? So Oh, yeah, chat box here. This is my. This is from my previous meeting chats. Oh, I see right there. If, uh, there. Past session there, but somebody might pop up a message here uh, that has something relevant for jumping in. There. It's Trixie right now, and she's not a coach. She's a is a leader right there. Share screen. Yeah. Oh, it tells you it's on the chat. It's in uh, chat. Yeah, you'll see it, I think, pop up there. But I think both of you do the slideshow from the uh, beginning here. Yeah, so this, this part here stays open. You see somebody jump in the chat, yeah. you can click on it. And it will, uh, up. Right now, this pets it's you and Trixie. Uh, oh, here's somebody's jumped in. Yeah, okay, so we got three there. All right, so Lorenzo is a coach. Just now, three three one. So we're actually good. She three three. You can wait a couple of minutes before you start, but we're recording. And uh, introduce yourself in detail what the uh, events are about. Just a little generic thing to introduce uh, the session. Just want them to see you. We'll stop share, and I'll come back and see. You. One setting, okay. but you can go in and out of that. So if you stop sharing, you go back and keep the tabletop. Well, of course, it's shared while I'm monitoring those. So, so, so you have to stop share because all they're saying now is PowerPoint. So if uh, you want to share, if you want to show this, you have to stop share and get the video back so you can show this. I mean, we'll and then go back to the PowerPoint again. Stop share, share there. And we P5. P5, we get you over here. If you want to start sharing again, yeah. there is it should be back to the full PowerPoint screen. Back where this one is. So, yeah. And now for you, Sally. Okay. Now I want to be around because I'm going to be looking at some stuff on my laptop over there. So, 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 so right now, right. Right. Okay. somebody else is joining in. So, get those groups there. They're recording now, right? And we're recording, yeah. So this is what they are seeing right now? Or they are seeing uh, right? No, they're saying this because we're sharing this. So they're seeing this. Screen. I have to stop share first. So right? if you want to stop share, just talk about yourself. So you can okay. introduce yourself there. Sounds good. Just remember, because I always forget, is I'm used to looking at my open screen. Is I want to look up at the camera. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got plenty of good sound. Yep, video is running. We are. 
We're all recording. Yeah, so. Hey, Gary, just so you know, we've got you guys up on a big screen in a big room. Um, coaches are listening individually um, and might be asking questions in the chat, but we've got you up on a big screen, too. Yeah, okay, good. Ray's going to try to keep an eye on a little chat box there, and I'll, I'll kind of stay nearby. All righty. Technical problems. All right, Ray, well, I'll turn it over to you, Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Ray Mohseni. I am an analytical chemist at ETSU, Department of Chemistry. Uh, I got training on the forensic chemistry many, many years ago. So I am a little bit know about forensic chemistry and crime buster. And I've been doing this event for the last uh, six, seven years with Dr. Hansen. And I'm so happy to join you over here to explain about what the plan would be for the next year based on the criteria and the guidelines provided. Let me share my screen here, stop the screen, and let me show you the PowerPoints here. So this is all right, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So. Basically, what we are going to be doing, talking a little bit about crime buster and forensic activities and events. So in terms of the activities, one of the activities we are going to do from crime buster is to give them unknown medals, a block of unknown medals, and ask them to basically identify what that is in terms of the figure out the density of uh, the metal unknown. We got six or seven different metals they have to look at. So what they could do, they could weigh it out, the balance, and they could look at the dimension, measure the dimensions of the cube, figure out the volume of the cube. And then after that, they could divide mass by volume to get the density. So the possibilities would be something like iron, lead, uh, zinc, magnesium, aluminum. These are a few choices that the students would look into and figure out what metal unknown they got. That's one of the activities. The other one, we give them a few solids. And to give them a few solids, <clears throat> they identify with doing different tests what these solids are. So they will identify for example, one of them could be yeast, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, calcium carbonate, sugar, table salt or sodium chloride, could be sand, and could be a metal wire. So basically we give them these solids, ask them to identify it. So they're usually very good in terms of doing the experiment and they do the activity just right. But sometimes they get confused between, for example, sand and sugar, or between, for example, sugar and table salt. So th these are important. A metal wire could be something like copper or could be aluminum wire. So these are the possibilities. Or it could be an iron wire, a piece of iron wire. So there are like three possibilities for them to figure out what kind of metal wire they've got. So, Again, sometimes in this case here, they get confused about figuring out which metal is which. But again, mostly they are doing just fine. In terms of solutions, we give them solutions like rubbing alcohol, water, ammonia, and acid. And acid could be HCl or could be a little bit of vinegar. And I'll also give them a base so they could identify the pH and based on the pH on the litmus, they could decide which one is an alcohol, I'm sorry, which one is acid, which one is a base. And for rubbing alcohol, they could do different tests. So these are one or two of these classes of compounds they get as unknown. Uh, in terms of recycling plastics, uh, possibilities would be PET, LDBE, PVC. So I'm going to show you basically the type of plastics I usually give them to identify. Let me stop share here.
Can you help me get yeah, yeah, me to yeah. P5? This is P1. Okay. So here is basically a milk of jog milk, jog of milk, so they could identify what kind of it is. Of course, I'm going to call it a piece of this. So I'm not going to leave the label there. Another one is, for example, soap dispenser or hand soap jar over here. This is like PETE. These are a couple of examples that are usually given. In terms of the, the solid, I give them a solid like this and label them as A, B, C, D, E, F. And then from there, they have to identify what kind of solid they've got, okay? And then in terms of the acid, of course, you know, I can give them, as I said, could be a little bit of vinegar or could be something like HCl, they have to identify. And they are usually good in terms of measuring the pH and deciding if something is an acid or a base. Let me go back here. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you are here. So you don't need to mess with that. Let's go back and just share screen. Just share screen. All right, very good. So talked about uh, PET, LED, LDPE, and PVC. Uh, so we can look at those as well. And then in terms of chromatography, uh, I usually give them TLC, uh, the ink, uh, give them the solvents and everything, the relooping solvents and ask them to identify what kind of ink they got. And usually the paper chromatography doesn't work very good, but what I would usually do, I would give them a piece of silico gel, cut it and mark it so they could use that. For forensic, what I would do, I would basically give them mass spectra of different compounds and ask them to identify it. For example, it could be something like benzoic acid, Benzoic acid has a nice fragmentation in terms of mass spec, and they could be easily de defining the fragments and identify the unknown. Sometimes I give them a little bit of ibuprofen as well, powder of ibuprofen to identify the peak of interest. Of course, I give them fragmentation. We don't do the instrument itself. I just provide them with the data, and they are usually good identifying. And then another activity we do, do, they do fingerprinting. The fingerprinting, basically we do different type of um, fingerprinting. One of them is carbon dusting. I provide them with carbon dusting and they would figure out exactly how the pattern on their fingers. And the carbon dusting is, I show you here, I don't know if you have seen this or not, but it works very good. It comes with the magnetic powder. Let me step back over here. So this magnetic power powder. A little bit of this will work just fine. Getting back to that. I thought it was showing. No, you share your screen. No, there you go. I'm sorry. So over here, this is magnetic powder. What they do basically, maybe I can show you on a piece of paper. There is a special piece of paper we have to usually use when I put my finger over here. Press my finger a little bit, and then put a little bit of magnetic powder on it. This will show you traces of basically prints over here. An invisible, one of the difficult type of printing is printing on, yeah, printing on piece of paper because there's not much traces left on this. But the doorknob, yeah, you get better printing. But this is kind of tracing that you will see uh, on uh, a special piece of paper. It's going to be much better. And it's going to be 
Another thing that I would usually do, basically I do carbon dusting. I don't have the carbon dusting over here because that makes a huge mess over here. I didn't want to make a mess in this lab. The other thing is we can do uh, iodine chamber. So they put their fingerprints on a piece of paper and put it in an iodine chamber. And then I ask them to compare which one give them better results. Usually, uh, basically carbon dusting give the best results in terms of the prints. Let's go back to PowerPoint. So again, uh, the, the types of magnetic powder, carbon dusting, iodine chamber, uh, and usually they make comparison between them. As I said, what they have to do, they have to show their prints uh, for their fingers. Usually they work in pairs and ask them for each student to show me at least one of their prints. All right, next we go to Then the last thing we usually do is a blood typing. Of course, it's not the actual blood. It's simulated blood and the types usually is just A, B, A, B, and O. And usually they get confused on this. Uh, I give them antiserum. Uh, let me stop sharing. It's okay now. Yeah. There you go. And then these are basically a package that I usually get. Uh, and then basically what they do, they are simulated blood and they taste it against antiserum A, antiserum B, and identify whether clotting occur or not based on the formation of clotting. And they could decide what kind of blood type it is, A, A, B, O, and A and B separately. All right, now we go back to So yeah, that's the last activity. Another thing that I would do usually at the start of the competition, I give them a storyline in terms of, for example, um, in a garden, the plants died and then they had to identify what kind of material was used to kill the plants. Again, going back to my original uh, slides over here, which had to do with what type of salt they got, whether it's sugar, whether it's yeast, sometimes corn starch, calcium carbonate. So based on that, they have to basically write in what kind of uh, solids they have as their own. And that's all I had. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer your questions. Oh, I was a shared I think somebody was shared. I thought I was. Okay. Here and you click on your full ones. Yeah. You wait to see if there's any chat. Oh, I see. Anything else coming in there? All right. Got the minutes. So if you want to go and see what this total here is. For my scan, if that was scribed on yeah. your forensics and talk to the whole group. If you want to move back on, you can just share your screen again and okay. go to your next PowerPoint. That's all I had, actually. There are no chat questions coming up. All right, so you can go on to... Uh... Yeah, I don't see any chats coming in. All right, so... Was that for was that for forensics or crime buster? For both of them. Oh, so both of them. Yeah. Okay. So nothing else overall? Yeah. 
to combine them together. So here's my asking about format as a can you explain the format of the event? Um the format is basically I give them a handout and the handout would have some questions. Um they, they, then they do the experiments and then they write a report before they leave the lab. And based on which group got the most answers, the highest number, they did be ranked. So again, it's doing the experiment as well as completing a lab report. The other question is how are the two event difference? For the difference between these two events is that for Crime Buster, we are gonna just give him the unknown sam unknown metal, and then we give him the salts or the solids, and then no fingerprinting. I'm sorry, no blood typing. So blood typing and mass spectrometry is going for forens for forensic. But for for crime buster is basically metals, solids, solution, fingerprinting. That's all they do for uh, crime buster. But for forensic, we add to that, we do a little bit of mass spectrometry as well as uh, blood type. No more questions coming through. We have another hit box over there. Was that part yeah, of the same thing? This is part of the blood typing thing. I brought the whole box and then I separate it over here. So, there are any aspects to chromatography that relate to these two? The chromatography, the chromatography is basically thin layer chromatography. We are not going to do HPLC or GCMS. The question now came in do you have any ideas for the students to participate at their school? Yeah, one of the main challenges for Crime Buster is identifying the metals the metal and the solids, like calcium carbonate, yeast, sugar, salt, and sand. These are the main ones that we usually give out. And the, the metals is usually aluminum, copper, and iron. So if they're feeling more comfortable with those, they should be just fine in terms of identifying them easy. But usually, yeah, those solids are a challenge for most students. The rest of them, they get fine, just no problem. But the solids and identifying the solid salts and identifying the metal, that could be a little bit of a challenge for the student. The material included in the test is, I don't have the list here with me, but calcium carbonate, yeast, sugar, Salt, uh, aluminum wire, copper wire, iron wire, and the solutions could be hydrochloric acid, vinegar, uh, ammonia, an acid or a base or acid and a base. These are the main materials that I usually include in the test and the lab that the students have to do. One thing I gotta mention, uh, it's basically a hint that you can pass on to your students is that since this is one one hour event, some group could be a little bit slow because they may have to run into the bathroom 
uh, in the middle of the test, in the middle of the experiment, or sometimes they are late to the to get to the lab. So that would basically cut their time short, even though they have 60 minutes altogether from the start to all finish, but sometimes they would put them behind. So something to encourage your student, use the bathroom before they come to the lab and then be on time. Those are the two main things that I noticed the students gonna fall behind. I hope I answer all your questions. I don't see any other questions coming through. Yes, I did. Yes. I think I did, yeah. Yeah, that's the last one I already answered. Okay. We'll join in in case you're thinking about the session by themselves. You can clean up in case they think of a final question before we sure. close out. Sure. Probably it for today, then. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. Thank you. Session is recorded as all today, so it'll be available on the Discord channels. Tracy and Ashley get those set up for us. We'll be returning here with an optic session after lunch.